Flow fam, we thank you for tuning in to Flowing Life, where we love God, love people, and live life. Matthew chapter 1, verse, uh, let me start at verse 18. This is what it says. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. How was she found with child? Of the Holy Spirit. All right, cheat sheet. I just gave it to you. 19, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Somebody say, in a dream. In a dream. He was asleep saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Somebody again say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You may be seated. <clears throat> um, this morning, I know y'all have gotten familiar with uh, um, the song, Mary, Did You Know, right? And around this time of year, we sing the song, we keep asking Mary, Mary, did you know? And I'm sure Mary is tired of the age-old question. Um, but we asked Mary, did she know what was inside of her? But this morning, I want to ask you, do you know what's inside of you? I think Chandler Moore said it best. He said, but do I know? Do you know what's inside of you? For a topic this morning, I want to use, do you know? You can swing it over to the topic. If you're taking notes this morning at the top, you can put, do you know? Do you know what's inside of you? The story of Mary being impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Let's not forget that she was a virgin, right? This is not just an age-old story that doesn't mean anything today, right? I had y'all repeat it after me and say how she was filled with this baby, and it came as a result of the Holy Spirit. Some of y'all probably know where I'm going. Holy Spirit is still relevant today. This is not just a story about Mary and the Immaculate Conception. This is a story about you and what's on the inside of you. If you are a believer, if you have received salvation, then you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit wants to birth something in you today. I told the team this morning, I said, God is coming for his gift. God is coming for his gift. He put something on the inside of each and every one of us under the sound of my voice. Yes, even y'all streaming online right now. He put something on the inside of you and he's coming for it and he won't take no for an answer. But I tell you what makes it a lot easier when we yield and we let him have his way. This story is about you. This story is about Holy Spirit doing something supernatural through a normal person to do something impossible. Doing something supernatural through a very natural person person, using an everyday person to do something incredible, to do something crazy. So this is what it says in Matthew chapter 1, verse, let's start at 19 again. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, wanted to put, uh, make her, didn't want to make her a public example, but was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Then it says, saying to Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Any of y'all that have kept up with at least half of my messages, you already know where I'm going with this. Anytime you see in the word of God, do not be afraid. If it's an angel, if it's the Holy Spirit, if it's God himself, if it's Jesus, if you see do not be afraid, then your spiritual antenna should go up. Because whatever he is about to speak to you, obviously it is something that you need to hear through your spiritual ear. Something you need to see through your spiritual lens because naturally this ain't going to make sense. So he gives him a heads up. He says, do not be afraid. I want to tell you this morning, do not fear. Don't be afraid of your calling. Don't be afraid of your anointing. Don't be afraid of your gift. Don't run from it. Run into it. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Right. Angel says, do not be afraid. And this is what he says right after that. Do not be afraid. Take to you, Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now I need to break this down. It said that Mary was betrothed to Joseph. They were engaged. They weren't married yet. While engaged, he finds out she's pregnant. Um, let's just let's let's take off the deep cap for just a second, right? Naturally, 
If I'm engaged, right, me and my wife dating, I put a ring on it. I say, hey, I am promising, I'm giving you my commitment that I'm going to marry you one day, right? And then I find out she's pregnant. My brother is here this morning. So I go to my bro and I say, <clears throat> bro, she's pregnant. You think his response is gonna be, oh, Holy Spirit is doing a work on the inside of her. <laughs> we find out she's pregnant. There's only one thing that could have happened. There's not a lot of choices. There's not even two choices. There's only one thing that could have happened. I talked to somebody one time uh, who got pregnant. They weren't trying to get pregnant. <clears throat> Um, they weren't married. We were having a conversation just talking about it. And they said, um, they said, uh, what they say? They said, um, they said, I didn't mean to get pregnant. I didn't do it on purpose. I mean, there's only one way. There's only one way. There's only one way. So either, if I'm talking to my family about this and I say, hey, she got, she got pregnant, <clears throat> they're going to say, all right, so what did you do? I'm going to say, I ain't do nothing. It only could have happened one way. So if you ain't do nothing, she was sleeping with somebody. She been with, <laughs> she been with somebody. So you can imagine how confused, how torn up Joseph, Joseph is about this. But he's a just man. She had her, she had her a good man. He said, I ain't going to put her away in public. I ain't going to expose her. I ain't going to call her on the carpet. I ain't going to air out all her dirty laundry. I'm going to put her away in private. Then Joseph has a dream. Joseph has a dream, and he says, take Mary as your wife. They're not married yet. He says, marry this woman. Still commit to this woman, because what's happening in her is a work of the Holy Spirit. I'm almost scared to ask. How many of y'all's friends, family, coworkers, prayer partners, how many of them are very quick to support something that doesn't make natural sense? Something that the Holy Spirit showed you, a gift that he put on the inside of you, but he didn't put on the inside of them, so they can't quite identify with what's in you because it's not in them, right? How quickly would they be uh, able to identify with what's going on in you if it wasn't something natural and it was something spiritual? Here's the thing, this might be something good to write down. That everybody won't always support your dream. I know, that's deep. That went over a bunch of y'all's heads. That was really spiritual. That was really heavy. Everybody's not going to support your dream. You know why they can't support your dream? Because they ain't see what you saw. Why are you depending on somebody to invest in your dream who wasn't in your dream? It said Joseph had a dream. Holy Spirit spoke to him in a dream. You wasn't in the dream with me, so I don't all, all the way expect you to understand what he showed me. And I can't even verbalize what I saw in the spirit. So me trying to explain it to you ain't even doing you any justice. Everybody ain't always going to support it. And guess what? When you understand your assignment, you won't be offended by people who don't. I don't expect you. I don't, I don't expect everybody to understand. God will send people around you that understand. He will send people around you that identify, but I don't expect everybody to know it. This is not something I'm posting on social media and I'm expecting everybody to give me a like about it, right? Because everybody's not going to understand. When we got ready to make this move to Charlotte, everybody didn't understand. Everybody didn't like it. Everybody wasn't on board. Now, granted, we had a mass of support. Our family was on, uh, was on board. Our pastor was on board. All the people who meant something, all the people who held some weight, in the decision, all the people who have value and interest and stock in our decision are the people who agreed with the decision. But the people who didn't understand, you don't got no weight in this decision anyway. <laughs> right? Everybody won't always understand. Because your spiritual assignment doesn't need a natural assessment. I'm not asking you to evaluate my situation. What God is doing on the inside of me is something spiritual. And if you be honest with yourself, you don't even all the way understand what's going on on the inside of you. 
Some days you're like, God, I know you gave me a gift. I know you've anointed me. I know you put some stuff on the inside of me, but uh, how am I supposed to use this thing? You got a manual to go with this? Are there directions? Are there instructions that come with this unique anointing that you've given me? Because some days I just don't get it. I don't understand. And some days I get confused because the people who are telling me that I shouldn't do it, I'm starting to believe them because I don't really know who I am. I don't know what I got on the inside of me. So how can I be confident in what I'm putting out? You listen to everybody if you don't know what God put on the inside of you. you. Take instruction from everybody if you don't know what God put on the inside of you. You'll be susceptible to every naysayer if you don't know what God put on the inside of you. But here's the problem. Maybe you the problem. I'm talking to myself. In verse 24, Matthew 1, 24. Then uh, then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, keep in mind, he was asleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him his wife. He was asleep, y'all. He was having a dream. And then once he woke up, then he went out and did it because of the dream. It doesn't say Mary came to him and tried to plead her case. It doesn't say that anybody else tried to talk to him, that his family supported him and pushed him out. It said he had a dream. He woke up from the dream. He didn't consult nobody about it. He woke up from the dream and he went out and actually did what the angel of the Lord told him to do. Sometimes God has to reveal spiritual truths in a dream because the lies in reality are too loud. (laughs) Everything else that you're hearing around you, God God has to knock you unconscious. I can't do this while you woke. As long as, as, as long as you're awake, you got your mind on it, you're thinking about it too hard. Man, there's been times in my life where, where I've been stressed out, worn out, overthinking a situation, and Holy Spirit will just be like, go to sleep. That, uh, that, don't, that, don't, that don't sound like something he would say. Holy Spirit, I, I, need, I need you to give me some favor instructions. I, I, need you to, I need you to tell me something that I can write down. I, I need you to give me something heavy that I can take to my mentor so I can, so I can let them know that I'm really working this thing. Go to sleep. Because some stuff I can only do while you sleep. Some stuff I can only do while you're unconscious. Some things I can only do once you take your mind off of it, once you take your hand off of it. Joseph had a dream, y'all. He was asleep. Now, depending on who you ask, they say you can control your dreams by what you eat, maybe by what you think on, what you're pondering on all the time. But for the most part, you ain't about to lay down and tell God what you're about to dream at night, right? <laughs> If that was the case, then, man, I'm telling you that we, we, we would be manifesting some stuff really fast. He'd be like, God, I need you to give me a dream about how to pay off my house tomorrow, right? You really can't control your dreams. Holy Spirit appeared to him in a dream, right? Joseph, you can't stop what I'm about to show you. Because if I were to show you this naturally, you would cut it off. You would stop it, right? You would shut it down. Even if I sent you a man of God to prophesy over your life, you'd be like, nah, I don't want to hear that. I ain't ready for that. So I need to meet you in your dream. I need to meet you in a vision. I need to show it to you in a way where you, can, you cannot deny that this is me. And that I would be the only one that gets glory from it because only I could do it. But maybe we're allowing the noise around us to drown out the voice of God. Maybe we're allowing the people around us to dilute our power. Maybe we're allowing our circumstances to somehow water down our gifts and the anointing on the inside of us. And he's saying, if I could just get little old you out of the way, I could do something pretty special. Right? If I could just get your little will out the way, if I could just get your little plan out the way. I know the new year coming up, and and, and, and many of us, I ain't going to say many of us, many of y'all, not y'all, many people um, are getting ready to, to do their New Year's resolutions. I don't got nothing against it. It's perfectly fine. Please have a plan, but stick to it, all right? But here's the thing. I've shared this before. Um, Right now it is December. Um, What's the first day of winter? Somebody tell me. What's the actual date for the first day of winter? I mean, y'all got self. Y'all got got self. 22nd. It's it's, it's somewhere about the 22nd. Winter's not here yet, right? Almost winter. (laughs) Boom! Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Siri. <laughs> um, 
So December, winter. January, season changes to spring. Right? Since Charlotte. <laughs> December is winter, and then January it changes to spring, right? Season ain't changed. Season's still the same. Whatever God spoke to you in this season, his word ain't changed because the calendar date changed. 2021, 2022, all right, I'm a new person. I'm going to do something different this year. Ain't nothing changed if ain't nothing changed. What's the last thing he told you to do? Go back and do that thing because that thing ain't changed until he spoke something else. Right? So when you're putting together your plans, I need you to factor in the last thing that he told you to do. Right? Because his new plan ain't going to do nothing unless you did the last thing. Right? So when we get in January, yes, God might give us a word for the year. Yes, God might give us a word for the season. But he ain't giving it to us because the season, because the year changed. He ain't giving it to us because the month changed. It's because he's trying to do a new thing. Right? But you have to be open for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. <clears throat> in verse 24, where it says, Then he aroused from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took his wife. Bro, it's got to be pretty tough to try to wrap your mind around something so natural, but so spiritually deep at the same time. All right, God, this, this help me to help me to understand this. This, this just it doesn't quite make sense. There's only one way that this can happen, and it didn't happen the way that I was expecting it to happen. How do you expect me? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Let me help you out with this. If this is something that began in the spirit, Galatians 3.3, how could you be so foolish to try to complete something in the spirit that was started? How, to, 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 let me say it again. How could you be so foolish to complete something in the flesh that began in the spirit? If this thing started in the spirit, then trust and believe it's going to be finished with the spirit. You're going to have to take your hands off of it at some point. If God said it, take it to the bank. It's going to happen. It is so. If he made you a promise, trust me, it's going to come to pass. But you have to trust and believe that this is something that he started. If you started it, then, yeah, you're going to have to finish it with the flesh. If it's something that you began, yeah, then this is something that you're going to have to finish. He's not obligated to come through for you for something that you picked up your hand and you started to do without his permission. All right. But Holy Spirit, if you started this. All right. You got it. So when you have them days, when, not if. So when you have those days, when, not if. But when you have those days when you start having second thoughts, when you start, start second guessing, start questioning what God put in you, start second guessing your gifts and, 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 and the plan that he showed you or the business model that he gave you or the creative idea or the creativity. When you start second guessing all of that stuff, then you can go back to the person that gave it to you. Hey, you're liable. You gave this to me. All right, Holy Spirit, I need you to come through. I need you to show me the next step. I need you to show me what to do. I need you to show me who to go speak to. I need you to show me what I need to be doing right now because if it began with you, then I know it needs to finish with you. If he spoke it, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. This man, this, this is the beautiful thing about the Spirit. Um, everything that you see in the world was created in the Spirit. I know that's heavy, but I'm explaining. Everything natural that you see was created in the spirit, right? Um, the beginning of the Bible, you go back and you read Genesis. What you see with your natural eye was spoken out of the mouth of God. He said, let it be, and it happened. Because the things that exist in the natural came from the things that existed in the spirit, right? A lot of physical manifestation that you might be looking for might very well be something that needs to begin in the spirit. That thing might begin on your knees. That thing might begin on your face. That thing will begin in your prayer closet. That thing will be in you praying in the spirit. That thing will be in your spiritual space. Well, God will give you a concept, he'll give you an idea, he'll feed you a seed, he'll give you what you need, and then you'll see the thing that he gave you in the spirit or in your mind, and then you'll see that thing one day in hand. But the thing that you hold in your hand started in your mind. The thing that got in your mind came from the Holy Spirit. 
If you want to see it in hand, then you're going to have to first see it in the spirit. Does that make sense? Let me break that down a little bit further. Right? If, if, if you want to see, you, I am going to see what he spoke. If God speaks something over your life, you don't have that thing in hand yet. All I have is a word from God. You're going to have seasons in your life where God speaks to you, and that's all you got to stand on. I don't got resources to stand on. I don't got money to stand on. I don't got family to stand on. I don't got friends to stand on. All I have is a word from God. Again, we moved down to Charlotte on a word from God. We had no babysitter. We had no family down here. We, we moved into, you know, a little apartment and started looking for houses. We didn't know where the grocery store was. Had to use the GPS just to go literally two miles up the street. Had to figure it out. Out. All we had to stand on was a word from God. And that word still sustains us today. So when we have moments, even in ministry, when we like, God, what you doing? We go back to the word. We like, all right, nope, you sent us out here. You're going to complete what you started. I'm just trying to encourage somebody because I know that you have something on the inside of you and God is coming for that gift. And so in those moments where you get discouraged, you got to go back. God, you put this thing on the inside of me. So you're going to have to be the one to pull this thing out of me. You put this thing on the inside of me, so you're going to have to dig through the dirt, dig through the pain, dig through some of the bitterness and the unforgiveness to pull this thing out and dust it off. You're going to have to pull this thing off the shelf that I've been neglecting for years. You're going to have to help me out with this because this is something that I'm not quite ready to do. Let me skip to the end part. Let me, let me, let me skip to the good part because I'm running out of time. In Luke chapter 1, verse 34, Really quickly, I'm going to try to run through this really quick. I only got about five minutes. Luke chapter 1, verse 34. Anybody get anything from this? 34. Then Mary said to the angel, how? Sway. (laughs) Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? How can this be? Say, I only, see, I only saw it happen in one way. God, I know you showed me something. I know there's something that you want me to do, but I only saw it happening one way. The Holy Spirit is trying to get your attention today. Say, I can do it however I want to. Because he is not boxed in by what we think, what we've been exposed to, and what we've seen. And he can do it however we... This, man, this, this is the interesting thing about, about, about Mary and Joseph, right? Um, they have been praying for a Savior. All of Israel have been praying for a savior. When are you going to come and save us? You promised us salvation. You promised us deliverance. God, where are you at? It's been thousands of years, and we ain't seen no salvation, no deliverance. They were praying for salvation. And then salvation ended up coming not only to her, came through her. This is why it messed Mary up. Because she like, just like a bunch of us. All right, I got a, God, I want you to do it to me. I know I spit. There's anointing on that, Miss Marjorie. <laughs> God, I know you want me to do it. I know you want to do it to me. But can he do it through? Can he do it through you? Whatever it is, you're, you're, you're praying for it. You're believing for it. All right, God, I'm, 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 I'm standing on your word, God. This is what I need you to do in my life. But can he do it through you? Right? All right, God, but I'm, I'm believing you to bless me, but can you be a blessing to somebody else? All right, God, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that you're going to bless my business, but can you bless somebody else's business? All right, God, I'm believing you for healing, but can you lay hands on somebody else for their healing? They're waiting for deliverance. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to give you a deliverer, but I'm going to send a deliverer through you. She didn't think it was going to happen that way. She just thought that God was just going to send him. All right, now we'll get to celebrate for our deliverance. But now that it has to come through you, everything changes. When Holy Spirit says, all right, well, the thing that you've been expecting, I want to do it through you. Then it hurts a little bit because it's like, all right, no, no, God, I, I, I wanted somebody else to set up the business. That way I can come and support it. I didn't want to be the one to have to create it because it's much easier just for me to show up and just to be a blessing whenever I feel like it, as opposed to having to be there in the dirt and the grind and the foundation and sleepless nights and staying up late and putting together a business plan and, 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 and trying to secure everything. It's just much easier for me to support somebody else that's already doing it. I know God's speaking to y'all, some, uh, some of y'all this morning. 
God has put some gifts on the inside of you. You waiting for somebody else to open theirs, and he's like, no, nah, they ain't going to open theirs until you open yours. Because I want to do it through you. For some of y'all, Jasmine knows this very well. You have a unique anointing, and you don't see in front of you uh, your gift that God put on the inside of you because it hasn't been created yet. Right? And so it's hard for you to, to have a business model. It's hard for you to, uh, it, it's hard for you to see a prototype. It's, it's hard for you to even imagine what this thing is supposed to look like because it ain't never happened yet. Because he doesn't want to just do it to you. He wants to do it through you. And this is what Holy Spirit says. It says in verse 35, And the angel answered and said to her, Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. If it overshadows, it means you're, you're in his shadow. Right? The glory is his. Right? So he's getting all the sun. He's taking all the glory. You're hitting in the shadow. And when you're in somebody else's shadow, we don't see your shadow. We see the shadow of the person who's getting all the sun, right? It's his shadow. It's for his glory. This is another thing that it says right here. It says the power of highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that the Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Somebody say the Son of God. Son of God. We've heard this term before and we know what it means, but... But when I was reading it this week, I was like, wait a minute. He said, the son of God. Wait, this is God's son. This is God's child. Jesus is God's little boy. So if this is my son, but I'm loaning him to you for a little bit, he's not yours. Mary, Jesus doesn't belong to you. We're going to talk about this next week. (laughs) Jesus don't belong to you. Right? You ask the question, Mary, did you know? I ain't going to answer that question whether she knew or not. I'm going to give you this week to research and find out. For yourself, if you think Mary knew that he was the son of God or not. We're going to talk about it next week. He said, this is be the, though he'll be called the son of God. This is my son, not yours, right? So it's my responsibility to take care of my son. It's my responsibility to make sure he's born. It's my responsibility to make sure he's healthy. It's my responsibility to make sure that he's raised the right way and that he fulfills his calling and his purpose. But he trusted Mary to carry what was his. Can you be found trusted today? Trusted to be able to carry what belongs to him. That gift ain't yours, I'm sorry. It's not yours. You didn't put it in yourself. You didn't give it to yourself. When you were created, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, in Psalms 139, I believe it is, it says he wrote out all your days even before you live one day. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He put it in you, handcrafted, even before you had a chance to even recognize what it was. It's not your gift. I don't know about you, but that gives me consolation. I'm like, if it's not my gift, then that's cool. (laughs) I got to take it. You got it. Right? But he says that I will overshadow you, that I'll cover you, right? That I'll be your cover. I'll cover your gift until it's time for that thing to be revealed. You won't have to worry about people trying to take advantage of you. You're covered. You don't have to to worry about people trying to steal money. you You just trying to use me for what I got. You don't got to worry about that. He says that I'll overshadow you. I'll cover you until it's time for revealing. Mary was trusted. I'll say this one last part in verse 38. This is the part we're going to end on. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. Let it be unto me according to your word. She can be trusted. In this one phrase, Mary gives Holy Spirit permission to change the world through her. Holy Spirit, I'm giving you permission. Obviously, you got something big you want to do. Obviously, I'm a very little person. <laughs> But if you want to change the world through me, let it be unto me according to your word. Essentially, what she was saying was, even though I don't fully understand, I'm still fully submitted. Even though I don't fully understand, you said it, I still completely trust you. Let it be unto me according to your word. Because even the word of God says heaven and earth will pass away but his word will stand forever. If you don't got nothing else to stand on, this is something that's unshakable, unbreakable. This is something that's immovable, is the word of God, and that can be your foundation on the gifts that he has given and put on the inside of you. Everybody stand on your feet. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this word today. Father, I thank you for speaking to us. I thank you for challenging us this morning. Father, and I thank you that each individual under the sound of my voice 
that they will have it in their heart to say the same words of Mary. Be it unto me according to your word. Glory to God. I almost dare somebody to say it. Be it unto me according to your word. Father, I thank you. Because in this room, Father, this room is filled with people that you can trust. You can trust us, Lord. The gift is already there. But you can trust us. You can trust us, God. You can trust us to bring it to pass. You can trust us that it will be fulfilled. You can trust us that we won't become prideful. That we won't try to hold on to it as if it belongs to us. The glory is yours. And this morning I declare it over you. No more spiritual abortions. No more spiritual stillbirths. Let it be unto you according to the word of God. That everything that he has spoken, that you will see it. Everything that he has promised, that it will come to pass. Everything that he has revealed, that it will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish everything that he has spoken it and sent it out to do. Complete your work, God. Make good on your word. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you for every gift present in each individual under the sound of my voice. I thank you that you will see to it that you cover it until it's time of revealing. I thank you that even by your Holy Spirit, you begin to give spiritual strategy. That you'll begin to give spiritual cadences, that your timing will be perfect. God, I thank you that you would reveal creativity and ideas, witty inventions. I thank you for million dollar ideas. To whom much is given, much is also required. You require much from us, God, which also means that you have given us much. Help us to be good stewards of your gift. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, Flow Fam. We hope you enjoyed the service today. And in case you miss any part of it, it's all right. You can go on over to our YouTube channel where all of our messages are saved. And while you're over there, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so that you can get a notification anytime we load a message. If this message has been a blessing to you today or any day, we ask that you consider giving a monetary donation online via our website or our cash app. For more information about upcoming events and what we have going on at the church, you can go over to our Facebook page, our Instagram page, any social media site, and you can get caught up there with what's going on with the ministry. If you've enjoyed yourself today, I ask that you share this with someone else you know. Share this with a friend. Invite a friend to church. We're in the building now. You can stream online. However, we ask that you just join us. And lastly, Flow Fam, we thank you for tuning in to flowing life where we love God, love people, and live life.